Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician, the Civil War, my Confederate career. Uh, if you have not seen the series up to this point, there's a link in the description that will take you back to the beginning. Uh, we are in July 1862. I just hired a chief of staff, uh, Lewis Little, who's a major general, which I am not even a major general. My chief of staff outranks me. So we need to fix that uh, for 438 uh, prestige, which we have that. Uh, we will get promotion to major general at last. Uh, we still have to fill out our staff corps as well. So uh, we don't quite have the prestige to do that right now, though. But these will all greatly benefit what we're able to do. Um, just showing you, for example, here, supply efficiency. Um, of course, ordnance, artillery, our engineer, medical. All of that is going to help the performance of our army. But we're going to need some more prestige first. In the meantime, we have 400 in terms of money. Uh, we are waiting on the party that we threw for 200, which is going to get us some more prestige, which will certainly help. Uh, there's not really anything else that we can do that's going to greatly benefit us at the moment. So we'll hold off and we'll give ourselves a chance to build up our army a little bit and then we'll see what happens. Our party was a success. So I'm looking now at um, the situation where we've been dealing with low ammo for quite a while. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at ordnance and see if we can't get a chief of ordnance that's going to help us a little bit. Arthur Cummings, uh, what will that do for us? This will add for us 10.7 on ammunition, so that's huge, and that's really an important need right now. What would a chief of artillery do? Uh, it adds to our artillery experience. A chief engineer gives us engineering points, which could come in handy in some battles. Uh, Chief Medical will improve our medical care, which I think would also be helpful. Uh, quartermaster Supply Efficiency. What about a Chief for Subsistence? That'll be Food Supplies. You know what? That's our next one. We're going to do that. Uh, that's going to help a lot. We're pretty low now on Prestige. I did throw another party, which cost us some more of our money, but I think it'll be helpful moving forward. All right, I flip myself to the other side here, make it a little easier to see the important information. Uh, the 3rd Division of the Army of Northeastern Virginia has decided to make an appearance under Charles Hamilton. Uh, we do have him outnumbered, although we've got some serious low morale issues to deal with here. Um, and it looks like I'll have my whole army. Excellent. So they won't be there right away, all of them. But once my entire army is there, we've got a substantial... Uh, advantage and manpower let's hope he doesn't run let's hope he stands and fights okay i'm digging in and uh we were able to use engineering points to build half of our parapet line the other half uh we're we're constructing right now uh the union's going to be coming in from this side somewhere so since the objectives are way down here i expect him to come down this road and probably hit us somewhere along here we really don't know for sure where he's going to be I mean, the only thing I can do is maybe send out some cavalry so we have a little bit of a head start on figuring that out. But I'm going to dig in, and we're going to hope that we guess correctly on where he's going to end up. And even better news is that just as the first elements of the Union start appearing in our front, our last division has arrived, and that's going to give us a nice advantage in manpower. We were pretty even up to that point. Uh, so, 4th North Carolina, we're going to continue to let them kind of screen things a little bit. I don't know why Walker's, Walker's Brigade, who that is. Oh, it's one of the brigades that doesn't actually have anyone yet. Uh, so, Walker and Ford are two brigade commanders that are of newly raised brigades, and they haven't arrived yet. So, Jackson's division actually only has two brigades at the moment. But that's still two brigades I didn't have before. So here comes the Union coming down that road as I expected. The question is, of course, how is he going to deploy once he is down that road? I'm going to pull the North Carolina Cavalry back now. And we're going to start bringing up these brigades. And I'm going to actually bring them up right here on my left. And that's going to give me a little more protection on that side and hopefully force him to funnel down into a nice killing zone 
here in the middle. He does have some trees and a little bit of a hill as protection, but I'm not too worried about that. We'll send McGowan, I think, maybe up here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing these guys around. A couple of these units have seen some fighting, so they don't have a lot of men left. He appears to be moving further to my right, and that's where he's going to try and hit us is on that weaker right side, which is fine. Um, what we'll do then is we will push things up with our fresh brigades that just arrived, which are not only fresh brigades, but they're also pretty strong brigades. And we'll start pressing forward with them, and if I need to, I can pull some of these guys, like maybe McClaws or... Nathan Bedford Forrest's brigades over here to the right to reinforce that. In fact, since I'm moving these guys forward, I may may go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and bring Forrest over here to reinforce what's happening here. And then we'll see if he is still forming any kind of an attack that might threaten my center. It's almost night. So, we're really not going to do much here anyway. We're going to be getting into the next day before we see any real combat. Yep, there it is. So now the question is going to be, where does he deploy? And should I go ahead and extend? I have a little bit of engineering points. Not much. But I can probably go ahead and extend my breastworks at least a little bit right here. Yeah, that's about all I'm going to get out of it. So it looks like he redeployed right here in the center, which is totally fine by me. For some reason, it moved these brigades down here, even though I kept them deployed up there. But that's okay. That's still going to work all right for me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring them back up to where they were. We'll keep Jackson's whole division in reserve for the time being. Um, looks like he's still going to try to hit me right here, which I was prepared for. And I've got some decently armed guys there, including some Whitworth rifles here, which give me nice long range. I can fire on them a lot as they're coming in. Get a head start on driving them off. I do have some artillery there as well on either side and looks like they're going to be able to fire on them as well so we'll start bringing up that division we'll sit tight we've got a 17,000 to 11,000 man advantage we've got a morale advantage as well and we're behind breastworks this should make for a pretty solid performance I've got a unit here under Wilcox uh, his brigade these guys all still have Springfield muskets, so that's why I put them in reserve. They don't quite have the weapons the others do, but I can definitely throw them on the line if I need to once we're already engaged, if I need to plug a hole somewhere. But this is where the fighting is going to be the most intense. It's going to be the 28th North Carolina and the 26th North Carolina. Quite a historical regiment. That was the regiment who saw the highest casualties of any single unit in a single battle. At the Battle of Gettysburg, they lost over 80%. Most of that on the first day. Hopefully we can rack up that prestige and get a nice victory in the process. Got them bunched up here in the center. That also means they're concentrating a lot of fire on these two regiments. That's why it's going to be important for me to make sure I've got some units in reserve ready to ready to jump into that spot if one of them should break. So far, we're good. Flicking about two to one casualties, which is what we like to see. Even though really we're outnumbered in this spot. Part of me is tempted to send a unit out here. 
fire onto his flank? I think I will. This is something that was done at, say, Gettysburg, for example, where Pickett's Charge comes in, and then the un Union actually has a couple of regiments. There were Vermonters on the south side, and I think the 8th Ohio on the north, who fired into the flanks of those divisions and just, it was devastating fire. They were facing canister in the front and small arms fire in the front, and then flanking fire as well. So I'm going to try to do the same thing here. I don't know where the rest of his army is. We may never see it. He does have some artillery that I can I can see smoke. They must be firing from up here somewhere. Twenty eighth North Carolina is starting to take some casualties. But that's just because they have so many units firing on them. do this a little faster we need to get some let's double time these guys I need to get some support for the 20 28th North Carolina because of the casualties they're taking now, I gotta be careful because there may be Union units back here I can't see because of these woods in the hill but if I drive off these couple of regiments here I think that might be enough to get the victory without having to do much else Here we go. Yeah, he's not going to last long in that situation. All right, bringing another unit forward over here, the 91st New York, 750 men. And then here's another regiment, the 29th PA, that's coming forward. So he's starting to extend the line a little bit. Let's go ahead and advance the 15th Maryland. We've got a nice, strong line. I'm, I'm really not worried right now at all. Alright, we routed them. It's looking good. Looking real good. Okay, now here come some more units down toward the 15th of Maryland. So we're going to pull them back again behind the line before they get caught out in the open. And then we'll welcome the Union to try and hit us again somewhere. Go ahead and move a couple of these units up onto the line. Still have some units with mixed muskets. We'll use some of the prestige we earn from this battle to rectify that. He may be pulling back. I don't even see his army at this point. Oh, there he is. He may yet try to hit us again. So he's been probing with a couple of regiments at a time. Uh, nothing real significant, but Colonel Archibald Gracie of the 26th North Carolina was killed in one of the latest little attacks that were made by these Union units, the 5th Maine, uh, as well as some artillery that came in. Uh, and now we're still hoping for a victory. It's still 2-1 to one casualties. Not sure why the 1st North Carolina is losing so many men. Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look, see who we're talking about here. I don't even see them. Oh, they're right here. Dang. I'm not entirely sure why that unit has lost so many men. There's only 267 of them to begin with, so let's pull them off the line and put a unit with significantly more manpower up there in their place. But it's still 2,000 to 1,000 in terms of the casualties. We've inflicted almost 20% casualties on the Union Army but he doesn't seem any closer to losing. He's just kind of grinding us down on our ammo right now because he keeps hitting us in that same spot with multiple units. I'm going to send some skirmishers forward to try and deal with that battery that's harassing us at the moment. And they were very quickly driven back. Here comes another attack. He just keeps launching like a two a two regiment wide attack. It, 
It seems his strategy is just to grind us down in that one spot by throwing his entire army at the same two regiments. And, and so what I have to do then is I have to look at ways to kind of deal with that by bringing fresh regiments into that area as well. We're going to have to get the 26th North Carolina off the line as they've lost nearly half their men and they're about to fall back on their own. We have the 22nd right there and they're going to go ahead and move right into that spot so we are ready for that. some point you would think it would be enough for him to fall back but it just hasn't happened yet there we drove off the 8th New Jersey but none of these routes are really moving the dial much at all which is really kind of surprising you know what, I'm actually gonna bring these guys 24th North Carolina I'm gonna bring them out here to this fence and get into their flanks a little bit there we go. We'll really mess him up. 93rd New York has three regiments firing on him at once. Plus artillery. He very quickly fi figured out that was not somewhere he wanted to be. We'll do the same with everybody he throws at me. I mean, seriously, we have driven back so many units and haven't been able to change this into victory. Pretty soon it's going to be a major victory, though. What's his morale at? It's down to 37. He's not going to take much more of this. He may be withdrawing now, actually. He withdrew just before it turned into a major victory. He needed 27% losses, and he was at 26% when he ordered the withdrawal. So he kept it from being a major victory for me. But uh, we did manage to take out 20 of his guns, of his 25 guns, 3,000 of his 11,000 men, uh, including a quarter of his cavalry. So a good victory, and most importantly, we come out of here with nearly 1,400 prestige to show for it. We're into mid-August now. My Major General's promotion still has not come through that I'm aware of. It's funny that I'm called Minister. I love that since I am actually a minister. Um, I've got maxed out fame, not a lot of initiative, but decent leadership and administration. Uh, still waiting for the promotion to come through. We have, however, kind of consolidated control over Virginia, and we've pushed the Yankees out to the fringes beyond the mountains and beyond the river. So... Uh, that's some good news there, that we have at least done that. I wouldn't mind going over and helping out with things over in the east now, but I'm waiting for the rest of my new units to arrive. All right, the party was successful. I've got 1,200 prestige. The problem is there are no weapons available except Whitworth's, and I don't want to spend all my prestige just upgrading everybody to Whitworth's. We need some better weapons uh, to be available here so it looks like some orders can be available to some of these uh, oh actually it, that's interesting for some reason it didn't show me the other ones but now now we're showing us having them available so let's go ahead and get our units upgraded as many as we can there appears to be a pretty massive federal army headed in our direction and we don't have a lot of help beyond our own so we'll see what happens. We're still holding Stanton, Virginia. I'm looking for the Wilson family so I can maybe tell them not, not to uh, do such a bad job raising their young son, Thomas. If you know, you know. But all my infantry is now upgraded to better weapons. I still have some cav that I can't get better weapons for, and some of my artillery are still using six-pounders. But that's just because there's nothing else available at the moment. I do have t over 23,000 men now. I think we might move north here before the campaign season gets away from us and maybe try to isolate part of this army here. Uh, where are we at on getting the rest of our units? We're still waiting on... We've got... Yeah, it's a long time to wait. I think we might go forward with what we've got. 
As I continue working my way up the valley, we have not yet come in contact with a major enemy force. We keep driving him back, and he doesn't want to make contact enough with us to actually engage in a fight. So I think for the time being, we're going to sit tight in Winchester and just try and bait him to come at us. Winchester is definitely a much more dangerous place to be than Stanton was. So our division started getting into a battle. I wasn't quite there yet to be able to take command, so we actually racked up 2,200 in prestige before I took command. We're at Winchester. Uh, so the, that's the good news. The bad news is that, number one, I don't have my third division yet. They're not arriving for another 13 hours. And the two divisions that have been engaged... Uh, are dealing with a little bit of a morale issue at the moment. Uh, so they're unstable to nervous and stable, some of them. So we're going to sit tight and let that morale get built back up a little bit before we push forward to try and win this victory. We do have uh, about a 5,000-man advantage. Morale is super low on both sides. Federal morale is just 27. Ours is 37. So as bad as mine is, his may be even worse. So I might look for a couple of units that have decent or stable morale and head forward with them first. And then we'll kind of go from there. And then in 13 hours when our other unit arrives, which won't be till the next day, we might be able to smash this federal, federal army. So I found the federal army, and they are every bit as weak as we are. Uh, my strongest brigades are these ones here on my left flank we are moving the right ones in i'm hoping everybody will be back in a stable situation by the time we get into combat but they don't like i said that may not be till the next day anyway okay So he may have just received some reinforcements of his own, which might really change the equation here. So with Abercrombie's division arriving, he's doubling his force. So honestly, I'm in a situation now where I'm not so sure I shouldn't press this attack and try to break these units before those guys arrive. But the problem is, I think even breaking them at this point probably wouldn't change the outcome. Because of Abercrombie's division, the problem is, where is he coming from? Because if he comes in somewhere else, I don't think he can. I think he's coming in one of these places. So he may come down this road here, though. And we're going to be a little while before our reinforcements arrive. So I'm going to send Nathan Bedford Forrest over there with his brigade to cover that potential. We're on to the next day. The rest of our troops have arrived. So now we're facing a situation where it's 21,000 for us and 18,000 for him. Morale, slightly higher for us, but he hold, holds the objectives. Uh, so Davidson's division, I'm thinking if the Union stays where he is, which is not a guarantee, we might be able to smash into his flank right there. But we don't know where the rest of his force is quite possible we may get surprised. So I'm going to move a few units up here just in case and we'll see where the rest of them show up. Okay, so we didn't see that coming. I moved my whole force forward to that line and he started shifting over here but what I didn't expect was we were going to run into uh, Union force over here that was moving down this road. So that's a bit of a surprise, and that certainly complicates things a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and start lining up to, to deal with this enemy as best we can. The good news is we encountered one brigade over here, or one regiment over here, which I think we'll be able to deal with pretty easily. We've got him kind of caught. So I think we surprised him as much as he surprised us. Problem is, a little different scenario over here. 
let's quickly send out some skirmishers from this line and that'll give us a chance to maybe build a little bit of a defensive line here now uh, they're getting driven back right away all right I think we need to press over here if we can I'm gonna start just by trying to deal with his artillery All right, I'm going to try to get these guys on the line as best I can. Please tell me that wasn't the 4th PA Cav I just smashed over here. It was. Oh, <laughs> my 4th great-grandfather was a sergeant in the 4th Pennsylvania Cavalry. His name was Dan Serby. He survived the war. And actually, I was just thinking about him because I saw General McCall over here. And if it's the same General McCall, uh, Dan Serby actually served as a courier for General McCall during this uh, Peninsula campaign in 1862 when he was with the 4th PA Cav. That's one of the few times I've seen one of my ancestors' units appear in this game. All right, I think the surprise helped us more than it hurt us, at least so far. Roger Hansen apparently was killed in some of the fighting before I took command. All right, we got to move these guys up. Let's keep closing the gap. Casualties about even so far, but morale favors us for sure. And I think it's only going to help in situations like this where he's marching down the road. And we're ready for him. With three, three regiments ready to fire. We've got this artillery that's going to be right up here on the hill. I think that'll be good too. All right, we need to press press forward more. Nope, nope, not with the whole army or a whole division even. Just Hill's brigade. Let's bring up the artillery. All right, we smashed both of those units. That was good. So let's bring everybody forward now. I think we've got him bunched up and in a pretty rough state. I think we surprised him with our deployment. I don't think he was expecting that additional division that arrived for me, at least not where they arrived. So if we can press the press the attack before he has a chance to recover, I think we'll have ourselves a nice advantage here. I'm going to have to turn the 40th North Carolina real quick to help out with this battery. Beautiful. See, because there was already fighting going on and a lot of these units' morale is already pretty close to the breaking point, it's not taking much to break some of these regiments. Yeah, in fact, just a couple of volleys is doing the trick in many cases. Come on, get there, boys. Especially with these 12 pounders firing canister at close range. And getting them stacked up the way we are. Beautiful. Okay, this is a bit of a problem here for the 14th Kentucky. They've got this artillery firing on them. All right, redeploy your skirmishers. I think we got this. Shouldn't take much more. All 
All right, I'm going to move this brigade forward. Let's get some reserves up. Put some pressure on this part of the line here. These guys are all nice and stacked up. All right, here I'm going to send some skirmishers out. Try to deal with this artillery. We lost 600 men, we've inflicted 900, and of course that doesn't count the casualties that happened before we took command. Union morale's down to 29. Alright, let's finish closing the other side of the door here, so to speak. Actually, let's send this whole brigade forward. Wilcox as well. I'm just going to keep pushing. Shouldn't take much to break him at this point. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. Bring the 12th Kentucky forward. Nice to have good good weapons for all these units now. Definitely makes a big difference. Union morale down to 26. His whole army is going to withdraw any second now. There's no way. I know it barely shows a victory at the moment, but his whole army's on the on the on the verge of collapse with morale like that. So I'm just going to really press this because it's not going to take much. Of course, mine's only 44. Mad amounts of prestige happening now. It's gonna allow me. I think I should be able to recruit another full division. Although I think I'd rather add brigades to the existing divisions, or add regiments to the existing brigades. Maybe get up to four regiments in each brigade, rather than add another division because the divisions move independently of each other, and I don't really want a fourth independent division on the map. on the campaign map. I can't believe that the Union hasn't retreated yet. His, his morale's actually gone up. As crazy as that seems. It's up to 29. Of course, mine's gone up some, too. I mean, I'm literally smashing his entire army. All right, let's send the Cav in to ride in and wreak havoc on themselves, apparently. That didn't work out so well. I mean, they did also break one of the... Connecticut Regiment, so that's good. We've got this massive force of Federals that are just bunched up over here and just need smashed. Hulk smash! Drive that whole force off and clear them out. I think we captured one of them. 5th Massachusetts Infantry has been wiped out. So yeah, look, we I mean we drove off that whole wing of the Federal Army and it didn't do anything toward moving. In fact, it switched us to a minor defeat even though we're now at 2 to 1 casualties. 
I don't understand what's happening here. We're going to have to grab the objective point, I think. So let's keep pushing forward. Move this whole division into line right here. Let's kind of reform our lines a little bit. We've gotten a little in disarray. There and two of my units just broke. And the commander of the 6th Kentucky was wounded, but that's okay. So on the left now, we're going to move up to this creek. It's going to offer us some cover as we try to smash his right. I'm just trying to hold the line on my right now. Both sides are just so battered at this point. We've got 3,700 prestige from this battle. And we've reached the end of the day again, which means everybody's going to have a chance to regroup, which I think probably favors him a little bit. But, yeah, his morale went all the way up to 40 now. Oh, my gosh. So we've got to reform our whole army. So what I've done is I've got my most stable and strongest brigades that haven't been bloodied as much as some of the others, uh, and I've put them on the front lines. I couldn't quite move them up to the creek. We just didn't hold that territory. So we'll move them up there now to get a little bit of cover. And we'll use the cavalry to cover this regiment that's still behind us here. Uh, okay, so he's lost 500 more men than me. He's got all those objective points, but we have the objective now, finally. So that should help. Now, we've got to try and drive off some of these units. We've got an advantage here. Basically two on one. So hopefully we can drive them off. Same types of advantages on this side. Almost 4,000 prestige now. Come on, get up to the creek and get that cover. He's up to 21% losses. Anything more than 23%. And it'll be a major defeat if we can win. But these guys do not want to break easily. We're starting to rack up the casualties on him now, though. I'm, I'm pretty content to just sit here and fight it out. I'm going to get all these guys up on the line against that creek, though, because it does offer protection. This is where I really need to break him. Who's taking a lot of casualties? guys here. Oh boy, yeah, they sure are. Right, let's get the 10th Kentucky up on the line to help out there. We've got the 7th Tennessee over here. We'll bring them up as well. Bloody Winchester, that's for sure. That's what we'll probably call this episode, Bloody Winchester. Still waiting for my promotion to Major General, too. I put that in a while ago. Usually it happens within a few days. My 
goodness, I cannot believe how these guys are fighting. Up to a thousand more casualties than me now. His morale's down to 23. How he has not broken as an army is beyond me. Alright, I think we're getting him now. Just gotta be patient. I, I, I'm not gonna march forward and try to charge into him. That's how we lost a lot of our men. Because we're racking up the casualties now on him. But man, so few of his army are still on the battlefield. And it's still showing as a defeat for us. Wow. Finally. Finally, we're going to have the major victory at 4,700 prestige is what we're going to come out of here with. That's definitely enough to recruit a new division, though we've certainly paid for it. I mean, because we were taking casualties before the 4,200 we lost here. Uh, I've easily lost a quarter of my army in the fighting in this battle. So we're going to come out of here with about... Seventeen thousand men. Bayonets. The men will fight like the devil when led by courageous in individuals. Interesting. Yeah, we're gonna have about seventeen thousand men coming out of this. Some of them will get back from the hospital that are wounded and can return to action. But we're definitely gonna have to do some recruiting and possibly some consolidation of units before this episode's over. But it's a major victory. Fifty-five hundred of the enemy. Our casualties. I like it. Unfortunately for us, we are officially out of enough recruits anywhere in the Confederacy to recruit a new unit. I recruited three new regiments for each of our three brigades in our uh, in Davidson's division, and then that was it. There's no more men. Uh, available at the moment. So uh, here's the situation. We've got 109,000 men in the field for the Confederates in the Eastern Theater. Uh, the morale, national morale, still at 71 for the Union, so a long way to go. He's got 160,000 men. Casualties are pretty close to the same. Uh, so really, there's not a lot more we can do until we get a little further into this game and more men are available to be recruited. So we've got a big stash of prestige in the meantime. Uh, so let's do this, though. Let's go back to our headquarters because we do have some staff positions that we need to fill. And we'll fill each of those with the best available. And that'll help us overall with everything. And that still leaves us with 3,600 prestige even after all of that is taken care of. So beyond that, then, the only other thing I can really do is for these new Maryland units is get their weapons upgraded. And then we just have to wait for more manpower to become available. I may do some moving around of some units just to balance out my divisions a little more so the manpower is similar. Because right now we've got much stronger and much weaker ones. We've got 7,500 men in Davidson's division, 5,500 in Chatham's, and 6,700 in Jackson's. Uh, and Jackson, if he's going to command a division, needs to be higher than a colonel. Honestly, I need to move up something. Like Joe Wheeler should probably be commanding that division, but maybe not. Uh, Lafayette McClaws, I can promote him to Brigadier General. He really should pro Well, no, Chatham's looking pretty good, too. I am still waiting on my promotion to Major General. So well, I guess that will be in the next episode. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.